Hi everyone, welcome back to Hope and Coffee, where we talk about all things literary, well, as many things literary as possible, things that intrigue me, uh, books that I read, and all sorts of things of that nature. I am sitting here with my coffee in the mug that I got on clearance. It was, I think it was a belated Christmas mug, but honestly, I love it. It's got a little star on it. It says shine bright. If it was Christmas, I still think it's got a great message. And we are talking today about Heaven and Earth Grocery Store by James McBride. And I really wanted to bring this up this month in February for Black History Month. Um, I feel like this is a wonderful time of year to be able to highlight this book. This was a book that was, won a Goodreads Choice Award and was nominated for Best Historical Fiction in 2023. This was also Barnes & Noble's Book of the Year and can be found in a lot of, um, pretty much, in a lot of places in Barnes and Noble and has been nominated for a lot of other awards as well. So we've got the NAACP Image Award nominee for fiction, National Jewish Book Award for Book Club Award, uh, Barnes and Noble Book of the Year Award, the RUSA Codes Listen List for Outstanding Audiobook Narration. Um, but overall, this book gets quite a few accolades. Uh, I read it in January and I really wanted to save this book. Well, I think I read it around the end of January, so I don't think holding it over for review until February was too, too far of a stretch of the imagination because I don't think I got this channel started until February, really. Um, but let's dive into Heaven and Earth Grocery Store and let's talk a little bit about the summary and kind of just its general historical relevance and those sorts of things. So, this book currently has 4.15 stars on Goodreads and I believe on Amazon also gets about 4.5 stars. So overall, very high ratings. Um, named Best Book of the Year by NPR slash Fresh Air, Washington Post, The New Yorker, and Time Magazine. It is one of Barack Obama's favorite books of 2023. So it is a quote unquote murder mystery locked inside a great American novel. So that's just kind of a little quote from the New York Times book review. So if you're kind of curious about that. Now, the reason I wanted to read it, and I don't know if you know or if you do or don't, what I picked this book up because it was Barnes & Noble's Book of the Year. I had actually not heard of this book until I saw it in January as Barnes & Noble's Book of the Year. And when I saw it on the table and had it had that sort of accolade, I was really in intrigued. I saw it had great reviews. I saw it was still really highly rated. And it came out in August of 2023. So I was like, you know what? I think this is well worth the read. And I think it was. I think I give it a solid probably 4 to 4.25 stars. Um, and I will tell you why a little later down the road. So let us dive in just a little bit. Uh, in 1972, when workers in Pottstown, Pennsylvania were digging the foundations for a new development, the last thing they expected to find was a skeleton at the bottom of a well. Who the skeleton was and how it got there were two of the long-held secrets kept by the residents of Chicken Hill, the dilapidated neighborhood where immigrant Jews and African Americans lived side by side and shared ambitions and sorrows. As these characters' stories overlap and deepen, it becomes clear how much the people who live in the margins struggle and what they must do to survive. When the truth is finally revealed about what happened on Chicken Hill and the part the town played of uh, the part the town's white establishment played in it, McBride shows us that even in dark times, it is love and community, heaven and earth that sustains us. So it is considered fiction slash historical fiction, literary fiction, mystery, African American, and many more. Um, 
there is no real magic or, or realism of any kind, or magical realism is what I'm trying to say in it. Um, I did audiobook it because I felt that since audiobook was one of the kind of highlighted titles and it was nominated for its audiobook narration, that I wanted to give it kind of its fair due, fair shake, um, for being audiobook to me. And honestly, I loved it. I really thought the narration was done very well, so give it kudos to that. And I did wonder why it was re why it received fiction and historical fiction, but I think some of the content is more speculation, possibly, but I'm not sure. I didn't look into the historical content of it, but it's a fantastic story of community. It is a fantastic story of people coming together to um, really highlight um, just so many different elements of people like showing each other love in different ways, showing each other support in different ways. Um, it does show discrimination at points. It shows a lot of the heartache and heartbreak. There's a lot of emotions in between these pages and in these words. Uh, you can see in McBride's words that he is, he seems a very gentle soul and he writes in that way. So um, there's a lot of humanity written in these pages. So um, I like, there's, there's characters like Fat Big Soap, um, Fatty, Monkey Pants, Dodo, and so that was pretty cool. And I just, I had such a wonderful time reading this book, but it's very sad in a lot of different aspects because we, I, okay, so I, I'm, of course I didn't live in 1972. Uh, I do know there was, of course, a lot of discrimination. Of course, this is a very impoverished part of Pennsylvania. And, um, well, actually, I think 72 was when the body was found, like, uncovered. So most of the book itself actually occurs in the 1930s when they're actually kind of like the peak of Chicken Hill when a lot of different things are happening. So we kind of open with... Um, with this particular character, uh, I think it's like Mosh, Moshi, um, and I, I truly apologize for not um, not being able to, to pronounce some of these um, Jewish names. So I truly apologize for that. But um, he he has a kind of a store that is utilized for kind of like a dance hall and a theater. But that's kind of where the Heaven and Earth grocery store starts because his wife is Shona. And Shona is a very much soft-hearted soul. She is unforgettable. She is absolutely um, kind to everyone, and she is handicapped in a and um, but it doesn't stop her from being just fiercely loyal to almost everyone. Very giving, and just so full of just grace to everyone. So. But when, when something happens, I'm not going to say what, we start to see the rest of the community kind of come together in order to, I don't know, kind of solve the mystery of what happens. And in a lot of different ways, it's, it's kind of up and down. We've got like the African-American community that starts working kind of kind of in parallel to the Jewish community because the Jewish community they um, they kind of accept that Shona like what happens to Shona and like but they what well, they want to figure it out <laughs> and I'm trying to be kind of vague about it because since this book has not even been out fully a year yet I don't want to give the details but the heart of the novel is that like a crime happens someone gets like blamed for it the community knows that person is not at fault for the crime and so the community itself kind of more or less goes on a setting things right sort of path for vengeance and um, I think it comes from a good place 
but it also comes from a place of not wanting to be, um, I guess, put aside by the white establishment that's more or less trying to put them aside or, you know, um, so this younger handicapped boy, Dodo, he, um, or maybe Dodo, Dodo, I think it's Dodo. <laughs> I don't, I don't want to be, again, um, insulting, but, um, he gets blamed for the crime and he had, um, the thing is, is that he's actually more of a witness, but that's why he's also, um, he's also special needs and he was, um, he was injured in an accident, so he can't defend himself very well. So other people have to come to his defense in order to put things right. And since he was truly the only witness, he's now being accused of it because it's kind of like the white man against him. And at this particular time, like the, per like the person that's being believed is the white man. And the community knows that that's very much suspicious and they don't feel like that's right because they know that this boy c could not and would have not have done what he's being accused of. So there is a lot of coming together and I just, I felt like it was so well done. But again, I'm trying to be very on the surface with like how I'm conveying this because there's so much nuance to the story and there's so much, I guess, strength and bonding and substance to the world that he builds and to the situations that he develops. Um, I get, again, there's a lot of emotion. Uh, there are a lot of ups and downs. There are a lot of hard parts to get through because some of them are very difficult. Um, there are some characters you will hate. There are some characters you will love. Um, but I thought it was very much worth a read. And I really wasn't sure how to come on here and truly do it justice for you. But I wanted to come on here and talk about it because it is so worthy of being talked about. Um, it embraces, and I'm going to quote this, from this other individual's narrative because they said it so clearly like a jazzy narrative, like a musical composition, the book embraces the diverse soul-stirring rhythms and blues of jazz music. The narrative swings, chases, boogies, and blues its way through a complex fusion of feelings creating a damn good story. And if I could pronounce Nilufer Osmekik, okay, so I, I mean, that's who I'm crediting with saying that line. Um, so thank you for providing that and saying it so succinctly because I think that is a great way to describe how this narrative flows. Um, it does have some slow points. The pacing is good, but Again, like a jazz piece, it has moments where it kind of slows and it has places where it speeds up. But I think if you give it a read and you read it with an open mind, you will be moved the way the story is intended to move you. So thank you so much for tuning into this episode about the Heaven and Earth Grocery Store. I will try to put a picture somewhere over here throughout this narrative um, just so you can kind of see what the cover looks like. I like to try to do that on these particular episodes just so y'all have an idea of what you're looking for if you go to a bookstore and you're interested in trying to find it. And thank you so much for tuning in and I will see you guys on the next page. Have a great one. Bye.